Well, hello folks, and welcome to James Morris World Traveler. Now, in this video, I want to do a quick review about Jack the Ripper walking tour that I took while I was in London, England. Now, this tour that I did, I've wanted to take it since 2016 when I was in London before, but I wasn't able to do it. So finally, seven years later, seven years it took me to finally take this tour, and I took it on June 8th, 2023. Now, I finally had that chance, and so when I googled the company beforehand, I booked the tour, obviously beforehand, because you have to, because the only way to do it, and to be able to get in, because they fill up, and they do have these tours seven days a week, or should I say seven nights a week, which start usually at seven o'clock in the evening. Now... When I had taken a look at the, the website, uh, it looked great and it rated very well. Now I will provide the, uh, there's no, it didn't say specific name for the company, uh, but the website. It says Jack the Ripper Tour, a walk worth investigating. Now I will probably just provide above or on here, the, uh, the website itself. And uh, so you can give it a chance if you decide you ever want to go take this tour, I will get more into detail later, but I definitely love this tour. Now, that said, I finally took this tour and I was so happy that I did, and I'm glad I did. Now, I arrived at the Aldgate Tower just before 7 o'clock. Now, they said that in the email to be there before seven o'clock in case and they leave sharp well technically they don't leave on the ball at seven o'clock it's they meet there at seven o'clock and usually within a few minutes thereafter they leave but not right away now I arrived there just before seven o'clock and around seven o'clock there were two people that I noticed with a list so I went over there I literally across from the tower and you know they took my name which I was on there and then they checked me off and they told me to go wait about 75 80 feet from there at this one hotel about eight maybe ten minutes later a guy pops out oh almost out of nowhere what the heck like where did you come from dude <laughs> so he introduces himself as Jeremy, our tour guide. Now, there are several other tour guides on this with this company, um, and the owner of the company who started it a long, long time ago. Again, this tour is phenomenal. Uh, that's the start off with before I get into the tour itself. Phenomenal. Jeremy is awesome. Now. We did end up going to multiple locations when Jeremy finished his introduction to us about him and a little bit about the tour. We went to uh, a places like a building that was the old Ye Frying Pan pub where one of the victims was at before she got murdered. Now, also, we were at uh, the Ten Bells. We were across the street from the Ten Bells pub, one of all, another pub that victims were at during this time, as well as the Mitre Square, which is one of the victims that were murdered there. Again, this is just a couple of the places that we went to, and we couldn't go to every place because Jeremy mentioned there's one, one specific one that was very far away. Uh, we were at another place where 
they built a new building, which used to be a walk, a roadway at that point back in those days. But it's now a building. But we were literally feet away from where the person was murdered. Um, now, Jeremy was freaking hilarious, man. This guy would say things like, um, you might have seen some time travel, you know, when we came through this one archway. You might have also smelt some time travel, which smells a little bit like urine. And then he says, well, we got that from Gwyneth Paltrow. It's a spray they put on. Again, the way he put it was freaking hilarious, basically. You might have smelt it because it smells a little bit like urine. It's a fragrance spray that we put down, and we got it from Gwyneth Paltrow. Now, I promised you time travel, didn't I, as you come through that tunnel? Well, the first thing you'd notice is these lovely old cobblestones. Maybe as you stepped into that tunnel, you smelt a bit of time travel. <laughs> That's a special spray we put down just to get you in the mood, in the vibes of the 1880s. Coincidentally, it does smell a bit like urine. Uh, we bought it from uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay. <laughs> Some of the comments he made about things like that were hilarious. And then another spot we were at was a bunch of houses, for example. And he says it might have been Dave who lived at that place, which was across from where we were standing. Just imagine at number 20, Dave lives with his family, and everybody on the street hates Dave. When the police came knocking, saying, Have you got any information? Did people give genuine, helpful, real information, or did they see a good opportunity to piss off Dave? <laughs> well, a lot of Dave got pissed off by this. A lot of Dave's actually got arrested. And they go, this is brilliant. We've got the handwriting of the killer now. All we need to do is give this to the newspapers to print, because surely somebody reading the newspaper might recognize this handwriting. Well, they did that. It was printed in the newspapers. A lot of people read this. And a lot of people recognized the handwriting. They said, yeah, that's Dave's handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> and loads more Dave's got arrested. But Some of the stuff he made with comments was they were hilarious. Now, he also mixed uh, a bunch of facts uh, with a little bit of humor. And to, so, so then he had a little bit of uh, excitement in his tour. Uh, about the realities, uh, the grim realities of the times back in those 18, late 1800s. Uh, he didn't want to be one of those guides that was like, oh, you know, so Jack the Ripper killed, you know, this person, you know, he mutilated her, you know, and this and that. You know, it would have been kind of boring. And it's like he, 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 he livens up his tours. And this is what he does. And he did make one joke, which was hilarious, that I really loved. He said, uh, first of all, okay, he called, before I get into that joke, he did at one point, he said that he doesn't like to go around calling these women prostitutes. They don't use that word. They call them the unfortunates. Now, I guess that's what they called them back in those days. The unfortunates, not prostitutes. Many women in Whitechapel had no other option but to do another type of work. We have many words for this type of work. Um, there's a rival tour company you'll see later tonight. They start around the corner. We'll see them later. Um, their tour guides will say prostitutes. Just to be clear, I'm not going to say prostitutes tonight. I've already said it now, haven't I? Um, the word I'm going to use is unfortunates. I'm using that word because they're actors, we're historians, and the word used in the 1880s was normally unfortunate. 